What I'd like to do right now is actually play some examples of what we're talking about. So if you're watching at home, please do put in some headphones if you have them, because when you listen to stuff on your iPhone or your iPad, you can get an idea, but it's never the same as, as using headphones. I love using these in-ear um, headphones now for everything that I do. I really hear everything so clear. So what I'm gonna do, if you don't mind, James, is I'm gonna play a recording of my Fishman Gold Plus direct to the computer. So this is what an under saddle pickup sounds like. We'll discuss that, and then I'll play a recording of a microphone, and then I'll play the Tone Dexter um, map that I curated this week with your new firmware 2.0, which is sounding very good, I have to say. And then we'll go over to the Tone Dexter, and you can explain to people how it's doing it and what they would do, you know, how, would they, how they would make their own, okay? Sure. So you might, not, you might not be able to hear this, but I have sent you the files ahead of time, James, so you know what it's going to sound like. That's okay. Okay, awesome. So this first recording you're going to hear in the chat, and let me know in the chat what you think as well. This first recording, again, is a Fishman Gold Plus under saddle pickup, and it sounds like this. Now, I'm not just saying this because Larry Fishman may be watching. I think that I think for an undersaddle pickup, that sounds really good. And I think it has some qualities, which are, it's very articulate. It's very, um, I'm trying to think of good words to use today. It's very punchy. It's, some people might say clear. But what you also hear in there is this kind of plasticky artifact type sound. Some people refer to it as quack, as I know audio sprockets do. I know that uh, Larry Fishman doesn't like the phrase quack, <laughs> so I wasn't going to use it. But you know what, you know what we mean, it's, it's not completely natural sounding. So what do you think about that? Uh, you, you heard, you, you've heard the recording, right, James? What are your thoughts on the sound of the undersaddle pickup? How would you explain it to people, that sound? I didn't have to hear the audio. That sound is etched in my brain. And um, <laughs> we've all heard it gazillions of times. And I have to say, you cannot blame the pickups for that sound. Now, pickups, they do their best. And what they're actually getting is not a lot of information to work with. They are, in the case of this kind of a pickup, undersaddles are basically just hearing the string and a little bit of the body of the guitar, but most of, mostly not. You know, maybe 10% body of the guitar and 90% direct string sound. So that brittle, quacky quality is not the fault of the pickup. It is the sound of the strings. That's what strings sounds like. Some people, you know, I'll just say, some people have a kind of a mistaken idea that it's because there's not enough headroom in their preamp, that that's what gives you that quacky sound. No, that's, that's not what it is. It's, that's the sound of the strings. Now, makers, you know, rightly so, they try to equalize that a little bit to, you know, take away a little bit of some of the harshness on the top end. And um, that helps a little bit. But still, you can only go so far, you know, with an undersaddle pickup. So, you know, it's what it is. Yeah, uh, they are good. They are good transducers in the sense of they're very linear. They aren't nonlinear like some people think. That's another mis sort of, you know, Internet myth. Some people think that they're nonlinear in the the harder you play them, they break, they, they change quality, they get, they get more brittle or something like that. That's not true either. They are very good linear transducers. As are soundboard transducers, piezo elements. Basically, piezos are, are very, very good transducers. And where you put them makes all the difference in the world as to what you get out of them as far as what they're able to sense that's moving on the guitar. I, so I don't have anything against them. In fact, if you know, that's that was main, mainly our main reason for doing Tone Dexter is because the majority of people use that style of pickup. Under saddles dominate, and we wanted to make something that would fix it, which is what Tone Dexter will do. It also fixes other kinds of pickups, whatever deficiencies they have. It will deal with those as well. I have, some, I have a, few, a few things I want to include. I was at the Martin factory years ago when I first got into Martin guitars and uh, one of the guys there said to me about pickups, really great line, you don't hear the guitar, you hear the pickup, right? I thought that was great. 
Yeah, I mean, it's it's another way of saying, I think, what I just tried to say, which is you're hearing the string and very little of the guitar. You know, it makes your $5,000 Martin sound like a $500 other kind of guitar. Yeah. Because you, in that sense, you basically can't tell the difference when it's going through that style of a pickup. Yeah. Unfortunately. What's amazing? Uh, unless you have a tone dexter. Right. Well, we get on to, we'll get on to that. Don't worry. Yeah. What's amazing, yeah. though, I just keep thinking of all these things over the years. Like when we went to Summer Nam, you know, you walk down Broadway where all, the, where all the bars are playing the live music and all you hear is that sound. You'd never know what kind of guitar they're playing. You just hear that sound all the time. It's absolutely amazing. One problem we have, I call it a problem. This is a whole discussion right here. One thing we have with this stuff is people are used to hearing the sound of a, of a naked undersaddle pickup. That's the sound they're used to hearing from an acoustic guitar. So it could be a real shock to hear a mic. Some people haven't even recorded their guitar into a microphone in their lifetime. So that's something else that people need to kind of do an experiment with as well. Let's, let's hear the microphone now. Let's hear the guitar through an actual microphone. Uh, no processing, okay? Mm -hmm. Wow, completely different. Now, I, I intentionally left on the beginning part where I picked up the guitar to show you one of the downfalls of a microphone. It picks up all the noise in the room. So if you have, I mean, I actually have bad technique on some of my recordings for the channel where I'll hit the pick against the guitar and you'll hear this on the guitar. It drives me crazy. Today, the planes are flying. If a plane flies overhead, you'll record the sound of the plane. These microphones that we use are condenser microphones. They pick up all the sound. This is the one I've been using, the Slate ML2, which was actually recommended uh, by James. It's a great microphone for the price. And that's one of the downfalls. But having said that, it sounded, in my opinion, big, warm, round, natural, and a very pleasing sound. Not as articulate as the Undersaddle pickup, to be fair, but just a very nice um, sound. And let me know if you agree in the chat. Um, I think most people would. And that's the sound of a mic. And that's the sound that a lot of people want to hear on stage. So now what I'm going to do, James, is I'm going to play the recording of the Tone Dexter um, so, so everyone can hear what the Tone Dexter actually, is actually doing. And then just quickly, I'll just cycle through the three so you can hear the underseller pick up the mic and then the Tone Dexter. And then I'll let you explain what it's doing and how it works, if that's okay. Sounds good. Okay, this is the Tone Dexter. No processing. Uh, again, recorded straight in. I mean, not playing them back to back, you would, if I didn't tell you, you would never know that wasn't a microphone. It's really, really impressive. Um, I'll just, before I hand over to you, James, I'll just play the under saddle, then the, the real mic, and then the tone dexter, just so we can hear them back to back briefly, okay? Here we go. Mm -hmm. I'll do under saddle, then mic, and then tone dexter. Now let us know what you think in the chat. Thank you to Chad Boston for the super chat. He says, I have a cup of coffee. I really appreciate it. I shall use my uh, sand hole sniffer mug. Cheers, Chad Boston. I appreciate your support. Um, James, I felt like the tone dexter was slightly less bright than the microphone, but otherwise really hard to tell the differences. 